Hey guys, welcome to Dolier Media. My name is Daniel, and today I'm gonna to be talking about X-rays, CTs, and MRIs. Now, whether you're in the clinical, like in the medical field, or whether you're at home and you're just curious which tests you're gonna have, or you wanna know more about it, this is the video that's gonna answer your questions. So let's get started. So an X-ray is uh, the first step that we do in the hospital to kind of get a picture inside your body. I'm not gonna go over the history of how it was invented or you know all that stuff but I'm gonna go over what the doctor is gonna see and what we're looking for in the healthcare field. So whether you're watching this video because you wanna know what this is or you're in the healthcare field and you need to know more, these are gonna be the questions that I'm gonna focus on. Again, I'm not gonna focus on the physiology or anything else. So an x-ray, you come to the hospital, let's say you broke your leg or something else is going on. We have a really quick picture that we could take inside your body and it pretty much measures density. The things that we could see on an x-ray are very useful though. So if we take one over your lungs, typically your lungs are just supposed to be filled with air and on an x-ray it's supposed to be just nothing but blackness with ribs showing in your, in your spine. But if you have a pleural effusion, which is a buildup of fluid between your lungs and the tissue that's around it, then we'll actually see a little divot. I'm gonna show a picture right now, but if you look at this thing on the, on the bottom right there, that's a pleural effusion. And what a pleural effusion does is it causes shortness of breath and all sorts of problems. This could be something as bad as you might have cancer or it could be something as simple as you just have an infection. But it at least tells us what's going on. Another thing that we could see on an x-ray is if let's say you have tuberculosis. That's actually from the word tubercules, which you see little black holes on an x-ray. And that's what, why you call it tuberculosis. Beyond that, we could also see emphysema, pneumonia. If there's any kind of fractures or broken bones, an x-ray is gonna be a really good indication of what you have. So if you're getting an x-ray done, that's what we're looking for. And if you're in the healthcare field, these are the things you could look out for. You could see if somebody has a pneumothorax or if somebody has an enlarged heart. Some pretty basic stuff that just kind of gives you a gist of what's going on in the patient's chart. Now we also do x-rays for broken bones and other places in your body that you might have. Typically you won't really see an x-ray done in the head. It's just a lot of radiation and we're not really gonna see, there's so much bones and density, especially people are, some people are thick headed, so it's not really gonna tell us much about what's going on in there. But we do see like fractures, hands, you know, you have your bones all over your body and we can get a good indication of what kind of fracture you have, what kind of break, or just kind of generally what's happening. But if anything else is going on, let's say you go to the hospital, you have an emergency, you're having trouble breathing, or something else is going on, we get an x-ray, we don't necessarily have the full picture or we're not getting what we want to get, then what we're going to do is we're going to take it to the next step. So the next step is a CT. It's computerized tomography. So what a CT is and what it does and what it's going to show us is a little bit more than an x-ray. A CT generally also has radiation and it's done relatively quickly. A CT can be anywhere from one minute to like 10 minutes if they're using contrast. But in about a minute or two, you get a series of x-rays so as opposed to seeing one picture of your lungs at that moment, a CT takes a series of a lot of pictures and it puts them together to make it look like a 3D model. So instead of just seeing a little thing, now you could start seeing more details and you could see a little bit more tissue differences. So you could see through blood vessels and blood clots and things like that. So let's use this scenario and apply it to this situation. You go to the hospital, you're having trouble breathing and they get an x-ray of you really quickly. They look for a pneumothorax, which is pretty much air being um, in, in um, the pocket between your lungs and it's pushing your lung and it's negative, so you don't have that. The next thing we look for is a pleural effusion or any kind of deviation of the trachea. You don't have that. So then we get a, a CT of you. Now a CT is gonna be in a different room. Again, it uses radiation. It's gonna take a little bit longer than an x-ray, maybe two, three minutes. Now we have a CT and we can see exactly what's going on. And on the CT, we're gonna be able to see the difference in your blood vessels and other things that you couldn't pick up on on a, just a regular plain picture of an x-ray. And with the CT, you do see blood clots. You do see other issues that might be going on. So that's what a CT is used for. Typically, it's in an emergent situation. Uh, that's why it's okay to have the radiation because if you're doing it just one time in an emergency, it's not gonna harshly affect the patient in the long run and it gives you a lot of data for just a quick time. So let's say you get into a car accident or like the scenario I was just saying with the shortness of breath, we do a CT and we see that you have blood clots in, um, in your lungs, pulmonary embolisms, 
or in a trauma, we can see if somebody has a stroke and if they're massively bleeding or not. You get that information within two, three minutes and it's very useful to see how bad things are. Now, because CTs are a lot more detailed than x-rays, we could actually start seeing tissue differences. So if somebody does have cancer or some other problem, we could actually pick that up on the CT. Um, we could pretty much roll it back from head to toe and you could see each slice of a human in real time, well, as when that was taken, and you could actually see if there's any kind of growths or any abnormalities. Also, you could use contrast to just give a little bit of a difference in the imaging, so we could actually pick up on things that you normally wouldn't be able to pick up on an x-ray. Now, finally, an MRI. So like I said, a CT goes over many, many images, just like an x-ray, but it has a ton more data and information. An MRI has even more of that information. MRIs are not, they don't have any radiation. It's just a big magnet that moves your cells around, vibrates them to a place where we can actually pick up on that movement. Now, the plus side of an MRI is that you see a lot more detail in tissue. So if there is something like cancer or let's say a spinal cord injury, you can actually really pick up on the difference in tissue on an MRI. On a CT, you would, it, might, it might be a little bit more blurry or hard to see, so an MRI is gonna give you a lot more detailed image. It's pretty much like taking um, a, a live video as opposed to just a picture or a series of pictures. Now the only downside of MRIs is that you have to be in the actual little tunnel for about 30 minutes. Now if you're claustrophobic or if you have other things that you can't fit maybe, then you're not gonna be able to do an MRI. So it's kind of like a benefits outweigh the risk situation. Let's say you're in a hospital and you do need an MRI, but you're claustrophobic. A CT might just be good enough where we get the image that we need and that's fine. But let's say we didn't get what we wanted on the CT. It was a little too blurry, it was hard to tell. We don't wanna shoot you with more radiation, so we're gonna recommend an MRI. And now with an MRI, we're gonna get a better detailed image of what's going on. With MRI, you get better images of things like, like I said earlier, tissues but you also get to see differences in radiation and contrast. So you get clear images of the brain, clear images of nerves and certain things like that. <clears throat> so I hope this answers the basic questions you had as to which one of these is useful for you, why you're doing this, or what kind of benefits do you get as a practitioner, as a nurse, as a doctor. Um, this kind of narrowly goes over everything that you kind of need to know. Obviously I can go into much more details as to why a CT is used for a stroke as opposed to an x-ray, but that's not what we're all about right now. If you do need more information, ask me. I'll definitely make a video about that. Also, these are really good professions. If, if you wanna work in any of these fields, they're absolutely amazing. You get paid well, you, you have a good job, you almost always have a really good team with you, the hours are good. So if you want me to make a video about that also, let me know and I'll make a video about that. Thank you guys for watching, have a great day.